What up, do? 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 It's Friday. I mean, no, Thursday. Ha! <laughs> Thankful Thursday. I don't know why I'm excited like it's Friday, but it is Thankful Thursdays, and we got the activities of our limbs. We ain't in nobody's hospital. We ain't in nobody's jail. Like I say, each and every week, y'all already know they have uh, made plenty of room for each and every one of us, okay? And if they don't got no room, guess what they're going to do? They're going to make some room. So, yes, it is thankful Thursday, and I'm super duper excited, okay? Because y'all already know. Y'all ain't got heaven and hell to put me in. So, look, boom. <laughs> Listen, so today I wanted to talk to you guys about um, do the dash, don't let the dash do you. And uh, this weekend, I had the opportunity to do some things that I love with some people that I love, right? And that's always a blessing uh, that your gift will make room for you. And um, if you're tuning in, you're listening to Yeah, I said it. And before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. Listen, I want you guys to uh, be my special guest for I for our I Remember Her Mother's Day brunch. Um, if you're like me and uh, your mother is, is no longer living, um, or you are a mother who has lost a child, we would love to have you as our guest. Uh, just check out Eventbrite for the I Remember Her uh, Mother's Day brunch, and I would love to have you as a special guest. But I'm talking to you guys today about do the dash, don't let the dash do you. And I know you're probably talking about what dash, what are you talking about? Well, over the weekend, um, I had the opportunity to uh, celebrate the life of one of my coaches from high school. So, of course, you already know I graduated from McKenzie High School, one of the schools at DPS. And uh, unfortunately, they tore our school down and then rebuilt a new school. But that is another conversation for another day. Um, however, uh, Coach Dozier was a very, very uh, legendary coach within the DPS um, school district not only because of his ability to uh, encourage athletes to their fullest potential, but being able to speak into the lives of others who don't realize their own potential. And when I talk about you doing the dash and don't let the dash do you, as I sat at his funeral and, um, you know, sometimes we go to funerals and they can be long and, you know, elaborate and then everybody want to get a two piece and a biscuit about that particular person. And, and sometimes we can be a little bit uh, um, impatient, um, you know, with with the the whole process and the program. Right. And the spirit had to check me real quick because sometimes we don't realize how much of the dash we can control. See, a lot of times we often give our complaints over to other people and our reasonings for doing the things that we do and the reasoning for why we say what we say and not knowing that we can control some of those things and whatever we cannot control, right? Whatever we cannot control, we have to learn to give it to A, God, your high power, your universe, whatever you want to give it to. You got to learn to relinquish certain things in order for you to live out your fullest potential. But being boggled down with stress, boggled down and bothered with unnecessary things and people that don't mean you no good only hinders where you need to be. And if you're tuning in, you're listening to, yeah, I said it before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. I'm talking all about do the dash, don't let the dash do you. And one of the reasons why I say for you to do the dash is because we get mad at people who actually live out their dash. You know, when they were talking about uh, Coach Dozier and I remember, you know, being at my mom's funeral and being at my dad's funeral and even being at my brother's funeral and, and being at other people's home going celebrations and all of the things that people say about you when you are no longer living. It reminded me of all the things that we actually need to say to one another while we're yet still living and yet still have breath in our bodies. And this is one of the reasons why I remember her Mother's Day brunch is so important is because there are things that we wish we could say to one another, but we wait until it's too late. And then we wish we would have said what we wanted to say at that appropriate or at that uh, specific time. And if you're tuning in, you're listening to Yah said it. And before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. And I know you heard me the first time. I'm talking all about do the dash, don't let the dash do you. Because see, this weekend, 
I was enjoying the journey of my dash because life is about a journey. It only becomes hard and it only becomes taxing when you're on the journey in life with the wrong people. See, I had to get some people off of my bus. I had to close the door on some people on this journey called life because everybody does not have the same vision that I have. Now, we all have not been given the same ideas. We haven't been given the same goals. We haven't been given uh, some of the, the same ideas as some of us have. However, life stopped being hard for me when I stopped being around people who were making it hard for me. See, sometimes our loyalty will get us in trouble with our destinations and where we're trying to go. See, I had an issue with trying to bring everybody with me that wasn't supposed to go. My issue was trying to give everybody an opportunity that didn't value the opportunity to that next level. See, it's easy for people to say, oh, I want to want to be around this type of people. Or I want to be around the movers and shakers. But all you're doing is watching the movers and shakers. You ain't moving and you ain't shaking. So how is it that you want the opportunities to be around the people that's moving, but you get it on? And see, one of the things that I teach uh, my mentees and I teach people who, who want to hang out with me and want to roll with me is that you are going to have to walk in this thing like you belong here. You ain't at the zoo. So stop watching everybody like, ooh, ah, ooh. And don't get me wrong. When you get in certain circles, when you get in certain upper echelon, you do begin to ooh and ah. But you also have to maintain that you are supposed to be here just like they are. See, a lot of times we end up devaluing ourselves before we get to the place where people can value us. You already feel like you don't even belong in the room because you think everybody is more important than you. Let me tell you something about Jaja Chantel Hubbard. I don't ever think anybody is more important than me. Okay? It is not because I'm trying to be braggadocious. It's not because I'm trying to say I'm all that in a bag of chips. It's because when you get to certain levels in life, you don't want to be looked at as a weakling, like you don't believe in what you are trying to do, or you don't believe in your gift or you don't believe in your brand. And that's how a lot of us get talked out of our dreams. And if you're tuning in, you're listening to, yeah, I said it. And before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. I'm talking all about do the dash, don't let the dash do you. Because see, there are going to be people that will be envious. And when I say envious, meaning they want what you have and the way that you have it. And then there are going to be people that are going to be jealous. And jealousy says people are going to like you more than me if you get ahead of me. We can't have jealousy and pride if we're going to work together. Because jealousy, pride, and ego, that holds no space in prosperity, collaborations, or blessings. All that does is hinder us as a team. And see, if you're tuning in, you're listening to y'all, I said it before I take it back. Y'all already know what I'm going to do. What I'm going to do? add more to it. And I know you heard me the first time because see, at the end of the day, when you create moments, right? Those moments are meant to be created. And see, a lot of us can't enjoy those moments because we're too busy trying to create another moment. See, I relish in those moments when I'm doing interviews and, and I'm meeting people. I'm not just sitting there, uh, ooh and an eye at them. I ain't picking their brain either. You know what I'm doing? I'm enjoying the moment because there are times where you won't get those moments back. See, if you're, if you're like me and you've lost your mother and, and you, your father has passed away and, and you've had family members who have gone on before you, you value those little moments. My son is just finishing up his freshman year and when he calls me or wants to hang out or want to kick it, guess what? I'll put whatever down for those little moments because those little moments are what we remember. You know, my mom and my dad, they did a lot for me, but it was those little moments that I remember that 
will carry us and catapult us to the next level. See, when our memory serves us correctly, we remember the things and the and the places and the people that make us who we are. You know, I, I sat down and I thought to myself, I said, you know, this world is something else. We go from pandemic to them talking about a war to now they talking about abortion rights. And at the end of the day, it's all a distraction from something else. And see, what I need you all to understand when it comes to certain laws like Roe versus Wade is that not only are uh, these man-made laws not conducive to us as individuals and to us as women, but it also lets us know God is not pleased. See, we keep thinking that we can have certain behaviors and that God just going to be like, God just going to be like, oh, it's okay. You ain't have to worry about that. You know, we, we have the tendency to think, oh, th don't worry about this. This this not going to have any results. And see, at the end of the day, we got to remember that everything we do has a consequence to it. And see, God says, vengeance vengeance is mine vengeance is mine karma is one thing but vengeance is what god is going to do in order for us to get back in line with him and this is why i look at people who decide that they want to cross me sideways because if you decide that you want to cross me right or cause some obstructions and problems in my life knowing how hard i work right you only set yourself up to fall flat on your face. This is why there are certain things that I have to put my hands up and say, because if I get involved, then I got to deal with my vengeance and my karma. But if I put my hands up, guess what? I can go and enjoy life. See, some people get mad at you because you are out here enjoying life while they got to deal with their vengeance and their karma. See, a lot of people put stuff out there and they don't realize that stuff got a boomerang back. So when they see people who are supposed to be crushed or supposed to be small or supposed to feel inadequate, no, nah, we enjoying our lives. We, we living it out to the fullest. It may not be where we want it to be, right? We may not be where we want to be financially, but we living in peace. Ain't nobody looking for us. We ain't sleeping with nobody else, man. We ain't lying on nobody. We ain't trying to stick nobody up. We, we done already been through the worst. God is seeing what, how we dealt with uh, the bullets that were shot at us, the negativity. And so God is saying, oh, you, 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 you could have boomeranged back and clapped back at them, but, but you didn't. So you know what? I'm going to grant you favor with these people. You know, you could have gave them back what they gave you. But you know what? I'm going to put a blessing on your business. You know what? I could have allowed this to take place. But you know what? I'm going to still grant you grace and favor. And see, everybody that's watching you ain't clapping for you. They may look like they are, but everybody ain't doing this and mean it. There are some people that are doing that, but they doing like this in their spirit. And see, at the end of the day, if you're tuning in, you're listening to y'all said it. And before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. I'm talking all about do the dash. Don't let the dash do you. Because, see, there are some people, life is whooping they behind. I know because life used to whoop mine. Oh, life used to whoop me with a stitching cord, baby, butt naked. And if you ain't never been whooped with an extension cord, then you are blessed. Because I've been whooped with an extension cord before. And that ain't, that's a different type of whooping. But life, life will hurt you so bad. Life will have you so broken down that you feel like you want to give up. And the very people who are supposed to lift you up can be the very people that's beating you down. This is why you got to grab life. You got to grab life so tight and you got to protect it so, so much so. I mean, for real. Like you are the treasure. You are the X that marks the spot. And if you're not careful, you will mishandle you and you're the blessing. You will mishandle you and you're the bag. 
you'll mishandle you and you're the prosperity that's connected to everybody else see this is the thing where people mess up i'm the person that's breaking generational curses in my family so i'm going to be the one that's going to be attacked the most ain't nobody else doing it in my family out of all of my siblings i'm the one that's breaking generational curses it ain't nobody else and see when you make the decision that you want to break generational curses when you tired of the people in your family going to prison, when you tired of people being alcoholics, when you tired of people uh, being broke and robbing Peter to pay Paul, you end up making certain decisions. And when you make certain decisions on behalf of yourself, your family, your extended family, I don't care how cool, close y'all ain't. At the end of the day, more people, watch this, watch what I'm getting ready to say. More people will have an advantage being connected to me than me being connected to them. You know why? Because I'm putting in the work to break some things off my family. So because I'm putting in the work to break some things off in my family, I'm going to be attacked the most. Not them. They already work for the devil. They already causing confusion. They already causing chaos. They already causing division. They already work for Satan, even if they don't think that they are. See, there are people who don't even realize that they're working for the for the devil. People that's messy, gossiping, causing chaos, causing problems for other people. Is that Christ's life? I'll wait. This is one of the reasons why I'm always challenging people who say that they are ambassadors for Christ. People who say that they believe in God, whether it's the white Jesus, the black Jesus, the beige Jesus. I don't really know and I don't really care. At the end of the day, you can't say, right, that I love God, but I'm hating on my homie. How, Sway? You can't say you my friend and somebody is bigging me up, but your face turned up. And if you're tuning in, you're listening to y'all, I said it before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. I'm talking all about do the dash, don't let the dash do you. And listen, I want you all to know first Friday is tomorrow. You already know it's open mic night. Um, I have my featured guest, uh, Mr. Tori Gray. It's going to be crazy bananas. I want y'all to come. Last month in April, we sold out. I had to go find chairs from another floor just so that we can have seating uh, uh, for the show last month. So I suggest y'all get there early tomorrow because it's going to be bananas. And it's so free. OK, I never realized how expression and open mic was so free until I started uh, really doing it. And I'm going to tell you something. Some of you all can't live your best life because you holding too much in here. And I'm not saying don't hold the secret things to your heart. But what I am saying is don't hold them in to the point where you're about to explode. See, I held stuff in for so long. That when the last camel, the last straw came, it definitely broke the camel's back. And I was going to break whoever back that was running up. You was going to get done up. Because when you get so tired of life, you don't got time to be playing no games with nobody. Somebody say something wrong and out of pocket to you, they was getting their head cracked in. The end. Because at a certain point. You should be able to know how to deal with me, just like I should be able to know how to deal with you. And if we're not dealing with each other the way we should be, you should be mature enough to say, you know what, my bad, and mean it. See, a lot of us, we apologize with no change behavior. It's like a man coming back after cheating and saying, I'm sorry, baby, I won't cheat again, only to turn back around and cheat some more. Why did you apologize if you was going to turn around and do the same thing? You was going to turn around and do the same thing. You could have kept the apology. Because, see, there comes a time in our lives where we got to make a certain decision to say, do I really want do I really want my life to be like this? What are people going to say about me when I die? I knew how to roll the best weed. I knew how to make the best drinks. What are what what foundational stability what how did i change my community how did i help how did i serve everybody want to be an entrepreneur but don't nobody want to have a serving spirit everybody want to get to the bag but don't nobody want to be a blessing to another person and for those of you who want to come out tomorrow for first friday it's going to be at 
220 Bagley, downtown Detroit, Michigan building, uh, fourth floor, room 430. Open the door start at uh the doors open at eight. Show starts at eight, about eight thirty. So people get in. Um, I'm having some amazing uh guests. I got the boss bar. I got um Lillian, she's gonna be doing some uh beads, uh waist beads. So I'm all about extending that relationship because guess what? I get on, I can put you on, and then they can put somebody else on, and then somebody else can get put on. But see, some of y'all are haters. You don't want to get put on. I was talking to I was talking to one of my family's members to, today, my nephew, and I said, you know, wouldn't it be ironic? Wouldn't it be a wouldn't it be amazing if our if our churches actually supported their members the way that they should? Wouldn't it be amazing if, if your alumni family actually supported you the way that they should? Wouldn't it be amazing? If your relatives actually supported you versus hating on you like they should, how many of us will be in generational wealth right now? But see, it becomes harder because you hating. It becomes harder because you hating. You know, one of the blessings that that I enjoy is people who don't have to help, but they still do. That's when you know you have value. When people support you and they don't have to, there's no, no, con, no contractual agreement that says that in order to be in my life that you have to support me. But the blessing is that you do because you recognize and understand that there is a purpose in my life. There's a passion for what I do and you have real genuine love for me. This is one of the reasons why I don't get bothered by people that don't want to be bothered with me. You saving me breath and you saving me a trip. Because, see, one of the things that I had to understand is one of the hardest things. One of the hardest things is just to let people be. Oh, this how you moving? Oh, it hurts. It hurts, but I got to go enjoy my life. The, the other day, well, not the other day, but last month in April, right? Me and my son, we wasn't talking. We wasn't talking for a few weeks because he called himself increasing his value. And I had to let that little ninja know, you got the right mama. I will pull up on you in Huntsville, my brother. You not about to be talking to me crazy. But see, at the end of the day, I also had to learn and make peace. I can't let what you doing and what you going through as a young adult, right? You 18. You're frustrated. You want more money. You seeing everything happen fast on social media. You watch me work hard. Son, you're going to have to work just as hard. I made the way easy. And this is what good parents do. When you're building generational blessings, this is what good parents do. They make the way easy for their children. But see, when you don't do your part, you make it harder for your kids. And so at the end of the day, you got to make a decision. I can't let that kill me. I can't let you stress me out. I can't put my position, myself in a position where I care more about your results than you do. This is why I'm always conscientious of how and who I partner and collab with. Because I can't partner with you if you don't work as hard on your stuff as I work on mine. Because, see, it's easy for people to ride your coattail. That, that means I ain't got to do as much work. Because I'm riding your coattail because you're the one doing most of the work. This is why to all the mothers, happy Mother's Day. To all the mothers who have lost children, happy Mother's Day. To all the women that have not birthed children, but are still operating as somebody's mama. Somebody grandma. Because I'm going to tell you something. A lot of us would not be where we are if it wasn't for people who actually did what they said they was going to do. I wouldn't be right here if Kelly didn't get up to show us and teach us how to make breakfast. I wouldn't be here if Kelly didn't show me how to do this or how to do that. I wouldn't be here if Kenny didn't teach me how to go and do this and how to go and do that. All of us are made up because of the hard work that our parents put in. And so 
I can't be around nobody that doesn't see the value in the hard work that the mama put in. When you, when you look at my son, you should see the hard work I put in as a mother. This is why there are some people that you got to do like this and be done with it. Ain't no B. I ain't mad at you, boo. I don't hate you, but I'm done. When I see you in the streets, hey, but I ain't calling you to hang out because when you had the opportunity to value me, when you had the opportunity to apologize, when you had the opportunity to change your behavior, when you had the opportunity to support, right? When you had the opportunity to say, you know what? This stuff right here bigger than this. And see, sometimes you got to look at the people you're dealing with. Some people don't see it as, you know what? We bigger than this. You know why? Because they holding on to pride and ego. Ego and pride say, I ain't apologizing. She should apologize first. Ego and pride says, I don't need you. I'm making money. I got this. I got that. Yeah, but do you got a friend? Do you got somebody that really care about you? Do you got somebody that's really looking out for you? Because see, sometimes we'll play people who actually had our best interests at heart. There are people who I had their best interests at heart that did not value what I brought to the table. And because they didn't value what I brought to the table, I got to go live my life. See, it's not that you want to chop it up and dismiss a person. It's at a point in your life where you got to say, I love me so much that I'm not willing to lose me because of you. Now, I love you. Even with my mama. There were days when my mom, y'all, let me tell y'all something. When my mom was transitioning from life to death, there were days that I was just so tired. Coming from Wayne County, coming from LOE, doing mentorship. And my mama like, are you coming up here? And I'm like, look, I can't. I'm tired. I'm running on fumes. And see, some of us will run ourselves ragged for everybody else. We out here just running, running. We helping them. We helping them. We taking them. We riding them. We dropping them off. We picking them up. We answering calls. We sending out texts. We doing all of this stuff for everybody else. But when it came time for me to need the support, I'm sitting over here with my hands, my, my head in my hands. I didn't had a whole nervous breakdown. Now everybody looking at me like I'm crazy because I done bust out all my windows out my own house. Oh, y'all don't want to help me pay no bills around here? Oh, so so everybody taking their checks and doing what they want to do with that. You over here buying makeup. You over here partying. You over here want gym shoes. You want candy. But I'm supposed to pay the DTE bill with my money. So everybody gets to do what they want to do with their money. But I'm the one that got to be responsible. So now you looking at everybody sideways. Like, oh, that's what we doing? This is what we doing? So you mean to tell me that I can run myself ragged and you can't help me fold these letters? Oh, 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 oh. So, so I got to be running back and forth like a chicken with my head cut off knowing that I'm running a whole business. So you mean to tell me I got to beg you to help me? But I just made provisions for you. This is why you got to enjoy the dash. You got to. When I sat there at Coach Dozier's funeral and I heard these NFL players talk about how amazing the relationship was and the things that he taught and, and the opportunities that he gave. They didn't talk about how he sat down and talk about how uh black boys wasn't no good and and how they need to pull their pants up and how they the, you know all these problems he didn't talk about the problem he found a resolution for and see that's a visionary that's an innovator that's a true leader when you see problems in your community and you ain't just sitting on your hands you ain't sitting on your hands you're doing something about it and when you learn to do something about it you start making changes, implementations. You start creating and manifesting the life that you want. See, you can't get mad at me 
and roll your ass because I'm out here interviewing celebrities and living my best life. You know why? Because I'm living out that dash. So that way when God say, all right, Jaja, let's wrap it on up, girl. I ain't saying no, I ain't ready yet. I still got stuff to do. You know, I'm worn out. I'm tired. God say, okay, baby, you done did, you, you done did everything that I called you to do. But see, people will watch on the sidelines, envious, mad at you for you stepping out on faith. None of us have a blueprint of, of how life's going to turn out. Nobody turns, nobody, nobody gets married to turn around and get divorced. Nobody has kids to be a single parent. Nobody grows up and decide, oh, I want to have alopecia. Nobody says, oh, I, I got to sleep on the couch because I can't afford a bed at the moment. Nobody says that they want to live in poverty and have hardships. I don't know anybody who wakes up and say, you know what? I want my life to be hard today. Nobody says that. And so because nobody says that, you don't know how life will turn out. You don't know where God will place certain people. So you better be mindful of how you treat everybody. I tell people everywhere I go, you don't know who know who. This world is so small. It's so small. Ukraine and, and, and Europe is right by Alaska. So if there were, if there was, or just so happened to be some extensions of anything, guess what? We too, we close. We're close. And if they can so easily bring back a law like Roe versus Wade, guess what they'll try to do? They'll try to bring back Jim Crow laws. See, this is why y'all got to start paying attention. Start worrying about who doing who, who wearing what. Or, see, that stuff, will, that stuff will keep us in the dark. And then we'll get mad at people who are walking in their purpose because you know why? They paying attention. I got to move a certain kind of way because I don't know how this going to go. I got to I gotta move over here because I don't know when they're going to change this up. And see, when you start paying attention to the world around you, the community around you, God will start saying, move this way. No, don't, don't, don't do no relationship with them. No, entertain the conversation. See where they're going with this thing. See, see where they're going with it. Look, hear them out. No, they ain't. I don't want you getting caught up in that, daughter. I don't know. Anytime that you ain't for sure about something, don't you make no decision. Anytime God ain't giving you a for sure yes. And not a yes because you want it to be a yes. Okay? Because there are consequences behind us agreeing and committing to do certain things. And if you're tuning in and you're listening to y'all, I said it before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. I'm talking about do the dash, don't let the dash do you. Because at the end of the day, we end up wasting time. Time is the most expensive thing that you'll ever get. Not your watch, not your car, not your outfit. It's time. Time you can't get a refund on. There are some things that you can get a refund on, an exchange policy. You can get a, 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 a store credit. You can get, a, I ain't never heard of no time credit. You can refund some time. But see, this is the thing about time. God will extend your time in areas and give you grace in certain areas when you understand what you're supposed to be doing. When you don't know what you're supposed to be doing, it'll feel like time is running through your hands like sand. People always ask me, they think I'm 40 something. I'm still in my 30s. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because my soul is old. My spirit is old. Like I've been here longer than what I've been. But see, God preserves me on the youth end because I don't look like what I've been through. And see, when you don't look like what you've been through, people don't know how to take you. They don't know. I don't really know. She look, she act young, but then she kind of act old. You understand what I'm saying? God will preserve. He will preserve you when you have a purpose. Look at people who grew up with you. I got people that I graduated school from and they look like they... They look like what they've been through in real life. Just take an inventory. Go through your family. They look like what they've been through. And I ain't saying it to say nothing other than God's grace is sufficient for me. God's mercy works for me. His wisdom is what I ask for on a daily basis. And see, you have not because you ain't asking for it. 
See, y'all y'all want the tangible stuff. I want the intangible stuff, stuff you can't go by. You know why? Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Because the stuff that money can't buy will get me the stuff it can. See, wisdom, you got to ask for it. Wisdom will say, don't spend $1,000 on that. Spend $1,000 on that, and that will get you that. But see, we ain't thinking that way. You know why? Because we want what we want when we want it. We want to show off to these people that don't care nothing about you. They ain't supporting you. They don't like you. They don't care nothing about what you're doing. They, they, ain't, they ain't checking for you. They ain't checking for you. And see, we end up maneuvering our lives for somebody else's life. I walk to my own drum. I walk to my own beat. That's why some people can't stand me. But I'm going to still keep walking. And I'm going to still keep walking. You know why? Because God told me, keep on going. He keep putting opportunities to say, hey, this is what you're supposed to be doing. Because I'm going to tell you something. When you are doing what you're supposed to be doing, God will open up doors that no man didn't anticipate you having. They looking at you like, how you get here? You was just homeless. I was. How you get here? You was just unemployed i was how you get here you was just carless i was <laughs> yeah have you ever had somebody look at you like how you doing what you doing when you just didn't have this and i am because this is the thing about life this is the thing about destinations this is why you gotta grab life don't worry about who doing what to the left and to the right of you because you can't afford to because somebody will drop you like a bad habit for their life and you sitting up here crying. Talking about, he didn't broke up with me and moved on and he didn't marry this woman. Because you know why? He grabbed life. He ain't think about what you're going to do with yours, boo-boo. He went and grabbed life. That's why I told my son, I ain't about to have you tripping out on me, fool. Okay, fool, you going to set trip on me? I'm your mama. You going to clip the lines off me? Okay. Because you going to need me before I'm going to need you. And if you don't value me as your mama now, what you going to do later? Oh, but the reality check sits in. It's set in, baby. Because this is the thing, right? And if you're tuning in, you're listening to you yeah, I said it. Before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. I'm talking all about do the dash. Don't let the dash do you. Because this is the thing. When you get to know you, all of you, the good, the bad, the indifferent, the things that people talk about, the things that people try to make seem like are so bad are your gifts. The 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 me losing my hair to alopecia. Yeah, it 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 became uh it, it was easy to laugh at until now it's an international thing. And everybody who knew I had it is now like, damn. That's the only thing everybody talking about. The very thing, the very thing that people tried to use to poke at you. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, she's so loud and ghetto. But now they booking me to use this loud ghetto girl from Joy Road and Seven Mile to make movie announcements, to do events. And I'm not saying this to be braggadocious. What I'm saying is, is that when you understand what you have been born to do, you ain't thinking about what nobody else is saying you can't do. Everybody got an opinion about you, just like they got an opinion about me. That don't make it factual. And it don't make it actual. It just means that this is the portion of their view of me at that particular time. And if you're tuning in, you're listening to Yeah, I Said It. And before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. Of course, you already know it's Mother's Day weekend. I want you all to be my very, very special guest for I Remember Her Mother's Day Brunch. I got a very, very special guest, Mr. Caddy Rebos, who's going to be performing for y'all. Listen, let me tell y'all something, ladies. He can sing. Fellas, he can sing, too. So if you ever need him for a little serenade, your girl or whatever, book him, okay? Um, I have an amazing... Um, a uh, poetic, poetic, uh, song, um, a uh, spoken word artist who's coming. I have all black vendors. You understand what I'm saying? Because if we gonna do this black business thing, 
If we're going to do this Black Wall Street thing, if we're going to support Black everything, y'all got to do it for real. You don't get to pick and choose when you want to be Black. You don't get to pick and choose when you want to spend money with your people. That should be in your heart and a part of your lifestyle. Some of y'all are fake to the culture. You talking about Black Lives Matter, but then you going to go out there to uh, Oakland Mall and you out there at, at, at uh, what's the mall out there? With all the brands, you out there with them spending all your money, but you won't even rock a black brand. You won't even support your people. You know, one of the most disheartening things that I had the uh, to experience is um, I had a few people support me when I opened up Detroit Lash Lounge, but one of the most one of the most challenging things as well as heartfelt things that I experienced was when I opened up Detroit Lash Lounge, my pastor came in there. He don't get no lashes done. He don't get no makeup done. My pastor came into my, my office, to my uh, Detroit Lash Lounge, prayed over my business. We chopped it up. He was trying to get some of my, uh, my food, but he ain't need none of it because we didn't want to be bothering his blood pressure. But it, I, I sat there in awe. And I thought to myself, here it is, a man that is extremely busy. I mean, he booked and busy. And he had the small time to come in and check on me. And I thank God that when he knocked on the door, I wasn't doing nothing that I ain't had no business. You understand what I'm saying? So, so, so when he came in, he was impressed. He was like, oh, wow. And see, at the end of the day, if we genuinely... If we genuinely support each other the way that we supposed to, that dash in the middle will be exactly what we need it to be. We won't leave this life with regrets. See, people who have regrets are only because they did not live their life to the fullest. This is why you gonna have to make some decisions about you. I ain't saying F them kids or F your spouse, but what I am saying is you gonna have to focus on you or you gonna die of stress. You, you gonna die of worry. You gonna be looking all around while you trying to fix everybody's situation and ain't nobody worried about trying to fix yours. See, what I ended up, what ended up happening to me, and I only can talk about me. I'm gonna tell my business. I ain't gonna tell y'all. When my mother passed away, I was trying to hold on to this, hold them together, keep this together, and I'm being held on together with two strings, band-aids, Bonding glue, crazy glue, and all it did was this. Boom, and I just broke. And I don't want that for y'all. I don't want you to run into life and you got to fall flat on your face. Because you trying to carry everything and everybody. People was asking me, was my son my little brother? Because they knew I was taking care of all my brothers and sisters. I had to tell them I'm a mama. And those same people who watched me struggle while my mama died, while I was taking care of my brothers and sisters, while I was walking across the street to the church, walking back home, while I was robbing Peter to pay Paul, putting five on five with change when people could have helped me. They could have supported my little business. Now they got to watch me do big business with big people and it ain't got nothing to do with none of y'all. Oh, and oh, the face, the faces look so crunchy. You know why the faces look so crunchy? Because the people that supposed to or could have valued you, they didn't. And now it's strangers that's putting emphasis and exclamation points on the back of your name. Your name is being requested. They calling your phone off the hook to say, baby, I want what you got. Can I get some? When they had access to what you had the whole time. They had access to what you had the whole time. This is why you got to live your life so that you don't have no regrets. Oh, you want to take me on a date? Okay. You ain't crazy. You ain't no child molester. You ain't no weirdo. You got to look up a dollars. Okay, sure. Let's go on a date. I'm living my life, baby. I ain't worried about this fool. Oh, you don't want to be with me no more? Oh, okay. Hey, you, you want to go on a date too? Okay, come on. Oh, hey, son. 
Hey, nope, your mama on the date. Let me call you back. Is it an emergency? Oh, it ain't an emergency. You just want, oh, I'm good. You good? Okay, bye. Because see, what, what ends up happening is we end up racking our brains. Why my, why my sibling want to act like this with me? Why they, why they don't want to love me the way I love them? Why, why not, when, I, when, they had, when they needed a shoulder to crown, mine was right here. Shoulder just available. Shoulder just right here. You over here crying on my shoulder. Shoulder just available. Then here it is. I'm looking at you. Can a nigga get a shoulder? I mean, I know we, we retired that word and everything, but can I get a shoulder? So then I had to learn. Okay, so you ain't got a shoulder for me. Got it. All right. Bet. So now that I know you don't got a shoulder for me, then I got to I gotta bring that shoulder over here. Because the shoulder, the shoulder got heavy when I was carrying your stuff. Right? I'm carrying your stuff. And so now I'm leaning. And I, I'm not balanced. I'm not balanced because I'm carrying y'all stuff. So you know what? Let me drop y'all stuff. Okay? Yeah, you're going to have attitude. No, you don't like what I said. Yeah, okay, you're going to be all right. I had to be okay when you was being fake with me. So you're going to you gonna have to be okay. Right? I, I, I had to learn. I had to learn. You know what? This ain't helping me. I'm doing more helping to you than you are helping to me. We could be helping each other. This could be different, right? This could be different. This could be better. This could, this could be possibly, potentially. However, I can't be the only person to be accountable. I can't be the only person doing a self-check. I can't be the only person that's apologizing this time. I can't be the only person that's, that's, that's saying, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's gonna have to be you too. You're gonna have to get in this with me too. See, I've let you be okay with walking away and not, and not taking accountability. But see, we're not kids. We got kids. So what we gonna do is, we are going to a, right? We're going to live our own lives, okay? You're going to have your opinion. I'm going to have mine. So now that you got yours and I got mine, what are we doing with it? Because, see, this is where the lines get crossed, okay? This is where I got, this is where I have a problem. And if you're tuning in, you're listening to you yeah, I said it. And before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. I'm talking all about enjoy the dash. I'm talking all about do the dash, don't let the dash do you. I know so many people who get upset and don't live their life because somebody mad at them. Somebody ain't talking to them. Somebody made somebody feel some type of way. You know, what people don't realize is that when you are a blessing, you're going to get blessed regardless of who like you or who don't. Who mad at you and who not? What I have come to understand is that no matter how somebody felt about me, if God wanted me to have it, I got it. And it ain't because I was so such and much. It wasn't because I was so, so phenomenal. It wasn't because I wasn't a sinner. It wasn't because I didn't do anything wrong. It wasn't because I was so pretty. It was because of the seeds that I have sown that nobody knows I sowed. There are some things that you have done for others that don't nobody know. And see, God will always bless you in public when you learn how to bless people in private. I ain't talking about, hey, guys, look, I'm giving out food to the, to the homeless. Look at me. I done gave out five bags to, to the homeless shelter. Look at me. That ain't blessing in private. That's, that's blessing in public. See, blessing somebody in private says I could put you on blast, but I ain't because I want to bless you. And see, you'll get favor for just some random stuff. You'll be in line and the lady say, you know what? Just happened to me the other day with my mentor. We went 
Go get food. She, I'm hungry. I'm on sugar's low. I'm too dumb. So I'm like, all right, girl, come on, let's go get some food. We go in the place to get some food. You hear me? We go in the place to get food. The lady says, the machine's down. We can't take any money. I say, well, she's hungry. I'm hungry. We'll just cash out. Can we just cash out you for the money? And then you can just put it in the register later. She said, no. I said, well, we still hungry. What's that? Go- how that's going to help us? She said, just get what y'all going to get. So we like, okay. So we get to the register. She said, go on, take y'all food. Bye. Go on, take our food. Bye. Like, go on, take our food. Bye. We ain't got to pay. Or... Go and take your food, still cash up us money. What, what you telling me? So at the end of the day, there, those are the moments when you recognize that God is blessing you. Now, the blessing may not come the way you want it to come. You, he may not come all five, five, uh, five, you know, six, two, and he may not come that way. And see, sometimes we will skip over a person that may be good for us because of what we think we want. There are some blessings with your name on it, but because they don't look like or come in the package in which you think they should, you look over. Not knowing that some of y'all husbands, y'all friends with. Some of, some of your closest uh, confidants really, really genuinely are haters. You don't even know it. They telling your business to their friends. This is why I've always been mindful of who my friends were friends with. Because I tell people all the time, your friends ain't my friends. Now, if your friends is my friends, then we all friends. But if we got different groups of friends, then I'm always mindful of what I'm saying to you. Because every listening ear is also a running mouth. Okay? Every listening ear is also a running mouth. So you always got to be mindful of the conversations that you're having about folks. Because see, words that get misconstrued. This is why I say to people, what you say? Tell me what you said. So that way, I let me tell y'all something, how I operate. I operate on truth, so I ain't got to be following up with lies. I ain't got to remember a lie if I'm telling you the truth. Now, what you do with that truth is on you. What you do with that truth is on you. See, a lot of us lie, and we lie, and we lie, and we lie. We just be lying about stuff. Stuff we ain't got to lie about. And see, that will end up catapulting into a whole nother issue. Now we got to cover up the lie that we told. And see, a lot of us are about to be out here drinking because it's Cinco de Mayo. And I want to say this before I get off this slide. Y'all bet not go out here celebrating Cinco de Mayo more than you celebrate Juneteenth or I'm going to punch you in the throat. Because ain't none of y'all Mexican, ain't none of y'all Latina, and ain't none of y'all had no Hispanic heritage. Now, if you do, the happy Cinco de Mayo to you. But if you got more black than that, you better be at the Juneteenth celebration with bells on. You out here with a some sombrero out here speaking Espanol and you can't even speak to people in English. You out here saucing it up, but you don't know nothing about your own black history. This is why, this is why education, paying attention, having certain conversations are so essential. Because if you don't know you, you'll be identified with everything else but who you're supposed to be. I love the fact, I love the fact that I know that when I leave this earth, that I have done everything God has called me to do and be. And as long as I got breath in my body, God has given me the opportunity to get out here and do it. Some of us sit on it because you afraid, scared. I've been there. I was scared. I was scared to walk away from Wayne County. I was working there for 12 years. I left there with a promotion, with an increase. I could go back there anytime. But I'm in this fight called entrepreneurship because there is something bigger that God wants me to do, and I can't do it there. 
That's just like when it comes to ministry. There are certain things that God want me to do and I can't do it in certain places because of the mindset that certain people have. And see, there are certain things that you will be able to get accomplished with people who are living out their dash like you. People who are, people who are unapologetic, who are unafraid to live their best life. That song ain't just a song. I'm living my best life. I ain't going back and forth with these. It's a real thing. You know why? Because in order for you to live that life, you cannot give certain people and certain things energy. I have been so stressed out. You know why? Because it was other people's stuff. Dealing with other people's attitudes. Dealing with other people's behaviors. Dealing with other people's responses on how I responded. Have you ever heard somebody get mad at you because of how you how you responded to their trespass? How you going to have an attitude with me on how I responded, but you ain't mad at you for how you had me to respond? People love to get people love to box you in because of how you respond to certain scenarios and situations. Also, you want me to be cool with you, even though you was talking about me? No, nah, we ain't doing that, boo. Not in this season. Oh you, oh, you want me to kick it and ha-ha and kiki with you and I know you don't like me? Nah, baby, I don't operate in fake. That's your ministry, not mine. So there are going to be some people, right, that are going to have to make some adjustments because there are certain behaviors that we just not tolerate no more. I'm not. I don't know about you. But there are certain behaviors, behavioral traits that I'm just not tolerating. And see, you got to get to a point in your life Right. Got to get to a point in your life where you understand that I love me and I'm not willing to keep sacrificing my happiness, my peace of mind. I can't get done what I want to get done because I'm helping you. See, there are some things and some situations and some scenarios and some people that I won't ever have respect for. You know why? Because at the opportunity for you to value a particular person, thing, or whatever the case may be, you didn't do it. And see, people will wait till you become really, really great. You was already great. And that's what you got to know. You was already great. Now you're going to get greater. Now that's when the greatness is going to be expanded. And now people got to see the greatness that you already had inside of you. That's just why that's that's why your enemies will be used as their as footstools because your enemies had to shake you up. See, my enemies had to talk about me so that I could put more emphasis in what I'm building. See, my enemies had to set me up. You know why? Because I had to see who was really for me and who was not my enemies. They had to put dirt on my name so that I can grow. Can't grow if ain't nobody. If ain't nobody throwing manure on you, you can't grow if ain't nobody causing obstructions for you. You can't grow if everybody loves you and you're a people pleaser and you say yes to everybody. You won't know an enemy when you see them. You know why? Because you don't think you got any. Oh, everybody loves me. So nice. I'm just, I'm friends with everyone. I try not to bother anybody. I just try to stay out the way. Well, guess what? You may think you're safe. But you're not. And at the end of the day, if you don't take hold of your life, you'll always be upset when somebody decides to walk away from you. As much as, much as I would love to have the support and love from others. And if you're tuning in and listening to Yah, I said it before I take it back. I'm going to add more We're talking about do the dash. Don't let the dash do you. As much as I would love for certain people to be in my life. As much as I would love for there to be a, 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 a consensus and, and, and for us to uh, concede to one another, that's my honest desire. But I also have a desire to live my best life. And if that means living my best life without you, then that's just what I'm going to have to do. Because, see, there are going to be people you want to go with you, right? Right? There was some, a lot of people I wanted to come with me to the Detroit Dreams premiere, right? Who I would have loved to walk in with. 
to, to who I would have loved to invite, but you don't see no value. You didn't see no value in what I was doing over there until I got with the big names. I, I would hate for you to know what I'm getting ready to do next week and, and who I'm getting ready to work with on today. Y'all will see it later, but it's just a point. You didn't value what I was doing when you saw me doing it. Now you see me really doing it, and now you're putting more value on it. Now I got to live my best life, baby, because you were willing to sacrifice my peace of mind for your pride. You were okay, right? You were okay with hurting me, not helping me. So now that God is putting me in high places, I, I can't reach down and pull you up because when I was down there with you and saying, hey, you get this shovel, I get this one and I got to dig it and you start talking, about, I'm tired. I'm about to go. Oh, so you done? You done shoveling? Okay. Thank you for what you could do. I appreciate you, but I got to keep it moving. And when you learn that, baby, you learn to enjoy life. And you learn to say to hell with whoever and whatever. Oh, okay. Sure. Oh, okay. All is well. Oh, you know what? Y'all doing that? Okay. All right. Well, you know what? I wish you well. See, I started learning what that really meant. Well, you know what? I'm the queen of you do you. I'm going to do me. Because when you start learning that, and that was a hard thing for me to learn, guys. I'm a mama. I'm a mama. So when you a parent and a real one, you have a covering, right? And, and I've been a, a mama a long time before I even had a kid. So when you are covering people, right? And you want the best for those people, you cover them. Then there becomes a time in your life where you have to uncover them. Like a mama bird, kicking her baby bird out of the nest. And that's not just a, a, um, an analogy for a mother and a child or a father and a child, but it's an analogy for anybody in your life. There comes a time in your life where you got to start kicking people out the nest of, of your life. Uh-uh, you too comfortable. You ain't bringing nothing in here, but just wasting my time. Uh-uh, you want to sit on the phone with me all day and talk about people. I got stuff to do. Oh, okay. You, you, what, what we, what's, what's happening here? Oh, okay. You, you don't want to step out on faith. Okay. Well, I'm on a faith walk right now. So if you're not on faith walk and you're not believing God for me, then I kind of don't need you around because I need people who believe. And so when you start learning that, you start saying, you know what? I got I got to enjoy my life with people who want to enjoy life, too. Oh, you, oh, you want to stay in the house all day and be sad? Oh, OK. Well, you go be sad right here. I'm about to go. I could be sad and depressed over my parents, over my brother, over certain circumstances in my life. But I make a conscientious decision every day. I'm going to live life to the fullest. When I was sitting here in my house about to die from, from COVID, right along with some of y'all, I'm not sitting around twiddling my fingers, waiting on them to throw me the next epidemic, the next uh, uh the, the, the next whatever they plan on throwing our way. Oh, because, baby, if you don't think it's something else coming, you a fool. If you think that that's the last little catastrophe that they go send our way. Come on, baby. Right now we talking about Roe versus Wade. When just last week we was talking about Ukraine and Poland. And, 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 and Russia. We just was talking about them last week. Now this week we talking about a whole law. This been abolished since the 60s. So this is the mindset that we are dealing in. And this is one of the reasons why when it comes to certain leadership, we don't have time to waste with people who don't have backbones. I don't do well with people who don't have backbones. You don't get to sit around and not say what needs to be said. Yeah, I said it. And before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. Deal with your feelings later, because right now we got generations to save. And if you want to sit around and watch generations go ahead and wither away, you do that over there. But you can't do it with me because that's not my assignment. My assignment ain't to sit on the sidelines. My assignment is to get in the game. So I love y'all.
make sure that you live out that dash and don't let that dash work you out. There are a lot of people who get whipped by life and they and they look like it, they talk like it, they walk like it. Don't let life fight you, fight back. Fight back. Them bills taking you over, fight back with a financial plan. Their relationship is taking you down the drain, you gonna have to get a backbone and cut it loose. Ain't nobody helping you, okay? Well, you can't get no benefits from not helping me. You gonna learn, you gonna have to learn to stand 10 toes down for you before you expect people to stand, stand 10 toes down for you. You gonna have to stand 10 toes down for you if you expect anybody to stand 10 toes down for you. Listen, live out that dash. Don't let that dash live out on you. I love y'all. Listen, this weekend, we got first Fridays tomorrow down at the office. Of course, you already know. We got the um, we got the I remember her Mother's Day brunch that's happening Saturday at eleven thirty. Listen, it's a it's a beautiful weekend. Happy Mother's Day to every woman um, who's ever considered themselves as a mother mother figure. For those of you who have children, had children, lost children, or those of you who feel like you a mother from the mother's board, I don't know. But at the end of the day, happy Mother's Day to you all. Happy Cinco de Mayo to my Hispanic and Latino family. And at the end of the day, I need y'all to pay attention at all times. Pay attention to your surroundings. Pay attention to who coming in and out your house. Pay attention to who on your phone. Start paying attention to what's going on in your life. You looking at everybody else's life, paying attention to everything that's going on with everybody else. But you, put that attention on you and watch how your life changes. Listen, I love y'all. Yeah, I said it. And before I take it back, y'all know what I'm going to do. What I'm going to do? Add more to it. Wash y'all hands and stay out of people's business. I love y'all. Peace.